professional baseball rd so we can get out on the field okay so i have the first question yeah you're in the seat of power okay so and you have do you have tenure and i've got my one quiz cap on yeah um with all the additions coming how do, what do you think about having the ability to have a dh now and how are you going to utilize that position i think uh, you know you know for us like so many teams right i think for us it's going to be a rotating type situation uh, i don't foresee us having one dh per se like in the classic sense of hal mccray ron bloomberg to the more modern era david ortiz nelson cruz i think you'll see it uh, that spot be filled by our position players so your new position player who is about to sign here, is, he's, he would be one of those candidates? He could, he could slide into a DH on a certain day for sure. But I would foresee him playing the field the greater majority of the time. Do you have a spot for him? Or is he, you want him to play regular third base? I think, we're, I think we're looking for him to play regular left field. Okay. Can you talk about your new regular shortstop? <clears throat> sure. Yeah. Like, well, I think you know what he brings is a a, a track record of um, being a, a true major league performing shortstop. Uh, great defender. You know he's shown that over the years, uh, and there's been times with the bat it's been productive. So uh, he's a he's been a very solid major league player, especially on defense and. An offense, it's been at times sort of sneaky good and sneaky productive, right? There's been a, there's been a little variability and some streakiness, but uh, you know this guy knows how to play. He's got great instincts. Uh, you know he plays with joy, right? You've seen him play, has fun. Uh, you know from the other side, and you know a lot of it was either interleague play or television, right? Because he's a longtime American leaguer before he got to the Reds. Uh, it's sort of fun to watch. I like that. Especially uh, for a ground ball throwing staff. Yes. His addition is. You know, we're right up there amongst the league leaders, if not the league leader in, in ground ball, ground ball rate. So we need we need defense. And, you know, and we've had that over the years not, uh, here, which has been a you know big part of our success when we've played well, when we've had, you know, good seasons is uh, in our defense, especially infield defense. And I think we're going to be fine there, too, with him. And, and Mac was out. I mean, Mac was awesome last year. Mac was great. Where does he fit in your lineup offensively? Well, in the batting order. Probably down the order, I mean, initially. But, you know, that could change depending on, you know, the grouping of players we have on a given night or, or even maybe how he's hitting. But I would I would suspect probably down the order for now. With uh, with Chris Bryant, the I mean he's clearly you know he's like a twenty five to thirty homer guy, good defense. Um, I mean he's a top fifty bat in right. baseball. What beyond the sort of basics, what does he bring to this team? What do you want? Well, uh, again, like most good players, right? They bring a stability and a dependable performance. You know, both offensively and defensively. I think that's, you know, when a guy's passed the test of time and you look at his career numbers, uh, you know, that is, <clears throat> for lack of a better term, comforting for a team, right? Whether, you know, top on down. Uh, you know, he's a, he's a middle of the order bat who's been proven and he just, you know, he brings uh, an element of just, Solid consistency. He's a he's a really good player. He's a really good player. Is there, you guys have tried for him, I believe, before. You tried for him really hard this time. Is there anything else a, about him that you guys found really attractive that you wanted him in his clubhouse? Yeah. Uh, the thing that stood out for me is that he wanted to be here. I mean, he wanted to be a Rocky. And they made it happen. Both sides. Which is a... Uh, something that you want. You want guys who want to be here. Just and that's great. 
And that's why, I mean, when you see, uh, you know, Marquez <clears throat> sign, Sensatella, uh, Bryant now, right? Uh, guys in the past, Helton, uh, you know, the, all the other long-term contracts. Tells you something, right? Uh, uh, I like that. Just, uh, just in that line, so, um, I mean, with, uh, just because I'm super curious, but um, you, you, you're talking about, you mentioned left field and his stability, and, and I, I, I hear exactly what you're saying. He also has some versatility defensively. No doubt. He can hit in different spots. No doubt. Are you going to use yes. him in the first Well, yeah, I mean, not, yes, if, if it if it warrants it, sure. Okay. But, and I, listen, we know that he's been moved around the diamond, right? Joe moved him around a ton. Uh, when he went to the Giants, uh, you know, they moved him around. And he was, you know, he's physically and mentally able to handle it. He's fine. But I, I still think that uh, if we can consistently put a player in one spot, it helps the player. But. What, I mean, it's not, but we also know these verses only can handle it too. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, things are always fluid, right, Nick? Yeah. You, you don't know. Plus, but, he likes it. Yeah, he, he, he likes it. He, he, he likes it. I, yeah, I mean, I've, yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, he's <clears throat> sure. Um, the group that you had coming back this year, it seemed like they were ready to welcome somebody in to have some impact on. How much of a lift do you feel that gives that group? I, I think it does. Uh, sure it does. It gives you, it gives the guys a bounce for sure. Uh, you can probably ask them individually how they feel, but from a you know a group standpoint, it sends a great message uh, to our players, uh, you know our fans. Uh, so, you know it helps. I mean, guys, you know, good players like to be around good players. As the roster sits now, um, where does Ron on top of He's in the outfield. Right, we saw him in center field a little bit last year. I mean, you know, he's he's on the team as a, you know, hopefully a, a productive outfielder. He had a, you know, pretty good first half. Uh, second half, you know, maybe not as productive as the first, but you know, Taps a major league player, good hitter, um, and like I said, had a, you know had some stretches last year where he was really really good, really helped us win. But he can do some things offensively, steal a base, uh, on base percentage, get a knock against a good pitcher. Uh, and like I said, his, his defense has incrementally improved each year, as we've talked about over the, over the years here. Do you have an easy for him yet, by chance? No. Okay. No. With, uh, with Chris, you know, with, um, you've, seen, you've seen some homegrown <coughs> players, so, uh, you know, I would say call, call stars recently, you know, Nolan and Trevor, um, even John. Do you think they... You mean recently or even going back to the I'm, Rocky history? I'm thinking more of the group who's, you know, Here. players oh. who are familiar with this group. So okay. Do you, does bringing Brian in, do you, do you, does it, it, was there some psychic damage that needed to be repaired? Is he, is he sort of fill in like, kind of, you know, is he going to work as a, as a sort of replacement figure lead? No, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, the guys that were here, uh, you know, are, you know, knew what was going on. They're fine in this, in that regard. I don't think they're, I don't think they were, in your words, damaged or whatever. What word did you use? No, because they know what was going on. I think the they, question, they, they know what's going I think on. the question really, that, you know, just to center in on what Nick is asking is, in the continuity of the organization, why do you get rid of an Arenado and don't pay other guys? And now all of a sudden you spend $180 million or whatever you're spending. There doesn't seem to be any continuity to what the organization is doing. I don't know about that, Barry. I think that, you know, there's, <clears throat> you know, behind the scenes and conversations that are had, right, of, of trying to keep players uh, and, and, and trying to keep that continuity is there, right? I think, you know, I'm not going to speak to, you know, what happened behind the scenes because that's behind the scenes and that's part of what organizations do. 
uh, and there's reasons for everything, but a lot of times they're, you know, they're not public. And how so, many years ago was it? We were just out front here when you extended an hour and out three or four years ago. Yeah. You know, and he was all hot to try. He wanted to stay here. You wanted him. Sure. And then the relationship evidently deteriorated. So you wound up getting rid of him, and now you're trying to build back. So, <laughs> and so that, I think the so psychic. That, that's been a good thing. Well, no, but I think that's the psychic damage that. That Nick is talking. I know about that's why I answered. I think yeah, the psych because I, 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 oh, I, I thought you know I, I thought he was asking maybe about the, been in the clubhouse. I, I answered the clubhouse right. thing. Players are fine because right. the players knows players know what happened. But he, so they players are good. But what about among the fan base? I don't know. I think they're fine too. They're probably excited. Probably super excited, right? Just like you know they got Russell Wilson. Super excited. Mm -hmm. I think fans like good players, and we just got one. So I would think they're excited and like happy when you sign good players. So you close the door on the rest of it and just move forward. I think there's a you know there's a natural progression of of, of players moving from team to team at times. They're rare are the are the days where you have the long time uh, draft and develop players stay with one team. Jeter, George. Uh, Robin Yount, Mattingly, I and mean, we, we can go down the line, right? right? In this day and age, we've seen a lot of big time players move, right? Especially recently, or a lot. I mean, you can, you more than anybody should know that about the superstars moving. It's Albert. been chronicled. Albert, Albert, what a what a great example, right? right? Yeah, now Freddie Freeman. So you're right. you're answering your own question. I Which ask. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you just answered your own question without without even knowing it. And that was pretty good. Yeah, there you go. You answer your own question. Charlie evolve through the last few years? And what do you oh, there's another guy who signed a long term deal because he wanted to be. Yes, and how do you? How have you seen him the last couple of years? And what do you? What do you, you know, Charlie played really well in the second half. Got off to a, a little bit of a tough start, like you know a lot of our guys last year. But you know, Charlie's is. Uh, as driven uh, today as he was when I first met him six years ago. Uh, you know, I've, I've said repeatedly, uh, nobody prepares and plays harder every day than Charlie Blackman from when I, uh, all my years as a, uh, as a player, teammate, coach. I mean, uh, Darren Nurstad comes to mind when I think of that type of like intensity and, and, preparedness and and playing hard and, and Charlie hasn't stopped one bit Charlie's a he's a pro and he's uh, I mean he's you know for me I mean you know he's joy to be around in a lot of ways but you know I respect him as much as any player that I've ever had as a teammate coach manager he could slide in the DH every once in a while sure absolutely he likes to play, though. He does. Yeah, that's that's always a. Uh, sometimes it, it shouldn't be as long as a conversation when I say, "Hey, Charlie, you're going to DH tomorrow." It should be pretty quick, but it's a long one. Mm -hmm. Buddy, no, come on, I want to play. Charlie, okay, here's what I'm thinking. No, but <laughs> come on, let me. Come on, I'd I'd rather play. So, given he's that, he's wonderful. Given that, he's wonderful now. He likes to play. He likes, and his uh, he likes to be. A, I can't remember the term he uses. Like he wants to be a. He says, "I want to be a baseball player. I don't want to be half a player today." And that's no knock on, like designated hitters. Given that, if we were putting a regular season lineup out there. There you go, Thomas. <laughs> go ahead. DH. What game? Game one or game fifty-three? Game one, game one Charlie is. I want to be a baseball, a, a full baseball player. Chris Bryant's in left field. Who's your DH? Don't know. Yeah, who's start? I mean, yeah, who, who's at first? Crone? Crone? Rogers? That second? I don't know, Thomas. Thomas, you know what? I'm going to tell you that April 7th, probably. Or, who or maybe the 8th. Who probably the 7th. Who'd be in the mix right now? That Who'd be in the mix? Yeah. Crone, Charlie, uh, Blackman. 
Well, that's Charlie Ann Black. <laughs> uh, Rogers, Iglesias, McMahon, Hilliard, Tapia, Hampson, Bryant. They'd all be in the mix. Daza. Marquez. What about lead? What about lead off there? Maybe that. that could get uh, Charlie, Tapia, Hampson, Connor, Joe. Shit, I have to ask you who's going to be your opening day starter. Marquez, <laughs> Freeland, Sensatella, <laughs> Gomber. Oh, I'll stop there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, buddy. Thanks, buddy. Okay, guys. Good job.